Let's get more on this now with the mayor of Aurora, Steve Hogan, the Colorado governor, John Hickenlooper. Thank you both for joining us this morning. And mayor, let me begin with you. We were just learning a little bit more about the investigation from Pierre Thomas right there. Do you have any other information about why this man might have done this? No, we don't have anything else right now. It's a very, uh, very cold-blooded, calculated, isolated instance. And it's, it's tragic and it's horrible for those families and it's, uh, it's, it's hurt the community. And we heard from your police chief, real rage. Absolutely. Um, you know, Aurora is a great place to be. Um, it's been tough for our citizens. Uh, our responders were, first responders were fantastic, but it's clear that apartment was set up to kill the first person who walked in the door, and more than likely, that was a police officer. And Governor Hickenlooper, I hear you describe Mr. Holmes as a kind of terrorist. What did you mean by that? Well, I think that if you look, his, his intent maybe wasn't political, but what he was was, I mean, clearly deranged, uh, twisted, demonic in some way, and he wanted to create fear, intense fear. He wanted to create terror. In, in the minds of the people in that theater and, of course, across the community. Mayor Hogan, how is the community coping with all this as the law sinks in? Well, I think we're going to be starting that grieving process. Uh, uh, we'll then start the healing process. Uh, certainly the vigil tonight will help. There have been other vigils the past couple nights um, that have been organized by others uh, and they're they're needed they're desperately needed uh, you know that I can see that building out of my office it's not more than five blocks away and I see it every day I know I'm gonna I'm gonna relive part of this for months uh, families are the community is uh, so uh, we, but we've got to start that process we can't we can't let this guy win uh, we have to start healing and we have to start creating uh, a better Aurora today. And Governor, you talked about the response plan that was put in place that probably saved uh, many lives. As the mayor had said earlier, it's a miracle the killing here wasn't even worse. Well, it's amazing. I mean, the, the state is heartbroken, right? I think the country is heartbroken. And yet, you look at the response, the first responders and, and Chief Oates uh, at the Aurora Police has talked about this. I mean, when they got these people to the hospital, they had, had police there within a couple of minutes. They had ambulances within three minutes. And they had five, six hundred doctors and nurses and med medical personnel all coming into these hospitals, to seven different hospitals. Between that and the, and the heroism people that really did stand in front or, or lie on top of others to protect and save them, it, it, you know, I don't even know how to express it except to say that it, it was for all the despair and, and, and anguish, there are these shining lights of, of caring people helping. And one of the guys out here was talking about how it, when it was a kid, his mother always said, you know, whenever you see a disaster on TV, look for the caring people. And there always are so many caring people that are trying to give comfort. In a way, that kind of helps lift, lift spirits. And Governor, I know you and members of your cabinet spent a lot of time at area hospitals yesterday meeting with the injured and the families of the victims. Well, we had our, our cabinet we sent out on Friday morning uh, so that at every hospital we had, they could almost act as ombudsmen, answer questions. So many, you know, in that situation, loved ones end up in different hospitals. They don't know the condition of their, of their boyfriend or their girlfriend or their spouse or their child. So our cabinet members who are, you know, like the Secretary of Human Services, you know, the senior people were there and they knew the right channels so they could get that information in real time back to people, which as we, the mayor and I went around yesterday and visited a number of families and, and victims and we, I heard a number of times of how grateful people were for that support. And mayor, what kind of stories are you hearing from those who were injured, the other victims? Well, certainly uh, concern about their family. Um, we, we saw some people yesterday who who are still terribly injured and, and may not make it. Uh, everybody's concerned about their family, but as the governor said, they're, they're, they understand the community cares. You know, our victim services people um, are getting out in, into the various uh, hospitals. We're, we're contacting not only those who are still in the hospital, but those who are injured and are not hospitalized. Um, it, 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 it's just an 
impossible situation to understand, and uh, we're still trying to uh, we're st still trying to deal with with all of it. Um, you see people who were who were hurt very badly at two o'clock in the morning and are sitting up in their bed talking. Uh, you see other people who who just simply aren't moving and are still facing serious serious surgery. So it, it's just a terrible situation. Boy, it certainly is. But as you can imagine, Governor, the debate over whether this could have been prevented has already begun. You probably heard the comments of, of Mayor Bloomberg of New York, who made headlines on Friday with his calls for tougher gun laws. Other people, several in your state, saying that, you know, perhaps if someone else in that theater had, had a gun, the killer could have been stopped. Does it make you think at this point that you need to take another look at Colorado's gun laws? You know, I'm sure that's going to happen, but, but I look at this, it, this wasn't a, a, a Colorado problem, this is a human problem, right? And how we can have such a warped individual and no one around them be aware. You know, I, I, I worry that if, if we got rid of all the guns, and certainly we have so many guns in this country, and we do have a lot more gun violence in many other countries, but even if he didn't have access to guns, this guy was, was, was diabolical, right? He would have found explosives. He would have found something else, some sort of poisonous gas. He would have done something to create this horror. Right. And, and, and Mayor, to pick up on a point that the governor just made right there, no one in the community seems to have had any, any inkling at all that there was something terribly wrong with this young man. Absolutely not. He, he, he appeared to everyone to be very normal. Uh, an intelligent guy. He was a student. Um, came here a couple of years ago from uh, from California. Uh, he was taking classes at uh, at the University of Colorado Medical Center. Uh, he he just by every standard appeared normal. Clearly, there's something wrong here. Did he there's have friends? Did he make connections? Had he put down any roots in the community? He did have friends. He had made connections. He had people he went drinking with on Friday nights. Um, and all the comments to date are normal guy. Uh, just something very seriously wrong here. Boy, it's just so hard to wrap your mind around what could make someone like that snap, Governor. It's, it's, it's inconceivable, but I think, I think ultimately, I mean, we'll, We'll get the experts and they'll, I mean, he's alive. We're going to study the, try to figure out what went wrong. But in the meantime, and I think Mayor Hogan and his team have been incredible at this, the key is to bring out the natural resilience in the people, not just of Aurora, but in, of Colorado and the country. And, you know, part of what him as a terrorist was trying to do is, is make people scared even going in the movies, right? And, you know, a number of uh, my chief of staff, her daughter is in her early 20s, and she took a whole gang of kids last night to go see Batman, just as a, as a political statement that they weren't going to give in to this. And I think that's part of what we have to do as a country, is, is come together and, and lift up the victims and their families, but at the same time say, you know, this country is defined by freedom and, and the pursuit of happiness, and that we're, we're not going to let this guy ruin our lives. And finally, Mayor Hogan, what do you hope to hear? from President Obama today, and how do you want your town to respond? Well, I think the president coming in is, is, is a wonderful gesture. Um, he's coming in really to have private conversations with the, with the families. I think that's totally appropriate. Um, you know, as the governor's indicated before, uh, he certainly could have come to the vigil, but that would have made the focus uh, on the president, not on the community, and he was well aware of that. Uh, I'm not so sure it's a message to the community other than him coming here. It's more a message to the, to the families and to the victims, uh, and, and I think that's totally appropriate. I thank him uh, for doing so. Uh, I, I wish he, that were not part of what he had to do this day, but uh, it certainly means a lot to Aurora. Uh, to know that, uh, that the president uh, cares. Uh, I talked with him on Friday, personal conversation, uh, told him I deeply appreciated that phone call. We've had numerous other contacts literally from around the world. Uh, we know people care. 
uh, we know in this time of instantaneous communication that people know what's going on and there's still feelings for all of us as part of uh, humankind. And uh, the city will go on, we'll get better. We're a, we're a great place, but we need a little bit of time to, to grieve and then start to heal, and it's just good to know that others care. Well, gentlemen, we are grieving with you. Our condolences to you, your families, everyone in your communities. Thanks for joining us this morning. Goodbye. Thank you.